guys, it's 7.30. Welcome to the first edition of 2019-2020 PD and your PJs. We tonight are gonna learn about Book Creator. If you haven't already, if you will go to the bit.ly address and grab this presentation, please realize that the um, URL address is case sensitive and I'm pretty sure it will pop up in the chat pretty soon but it's bit.ly slash capital P, capital J, capital B, and then for books. And while you guys are grabbing that presentation, if you can't hear me, you should be able to see me, so I'm talking. If you can't hear my voice, if you will make a note in the chat so we can help try to troubleshoot what may be the issue with that. And the second thing, once you get this presentation, you're going to want to click on the add to drive icon in the top corner of your right beside of where the title is up at the top. So you guys will have this in your drive for later in case you have questions. So while you guys are um, grabbing that URL and getting into the website. Let's pause for a moment for the only commercial you're going to have tonight. A word from our sponsor. PD and your PJs is brought to you by Gaston Digital, which was funded initially by a grant from the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction to help teachers learn more about the digital learning competencies. If you haven't visited our site, which you had to, to get to the reservations for this um, PD and your PJs tonight, but if you haven't clicked on the other links on our site, I strongly recommend that you check it out. We have a brand new app that was launched this year that's got all of our session resources on it. We are launching Facebook Workplace. You're going to hear more about that pretty soon. And please sign up for our Tech Minutes that comes out every month to your email. That will keep you up to date with everything that's going on. We are going to start our first feeder focus Monday, October the 14th, I believe it is. It'll be coming to you somewhere. Close to you, we're looking at middle schools this year. We'll start right after school. Of course, PD and your PJs will happen again in October. You'll learn more about that at the end of the session. And we also have launched our online modules. So please go to Gaston Digital and check that out. End of commercial. So our plan for tonight is to dive into Book Creator, one of my all-time favorite tools, and it is so versatile for all grade levels. So our plan is to kind of do an introduction, look at some ideas, and then I'm going to walk you through how to actually create a couple pages in a book. And then we'll have a Q&A session and set goals for your um, implementation with your students. The objectives, of course, drive from the digital learning competencies from North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. I'm not going to read those to you, but we are pulling from digital content and instruction and leadership and digital learning for tonight's session. Just a heads up, anytime we do DLC training, we do have to have some kind of artifact to show that you are practicing and trying to master those standards. So the artifact for this session tonight is a completion of a form that you will have the link for the little book that we're going to make together and you will submit that and answer one reflection question. I promise it's easy. Laid back, take a breath. We're all in this together. So let's stop and take a poll for a second before I introduce my co-workers that are working with me tonight. I am curious if you have ever participated in PD in your PJs before or PD by the pool this summer. So I am going to launch our poll. And you guys should just be able to click on the results. If you've attended once before, if you've attended more than one time before, or you are a first time guest tonight. And I know that we have a few people that email me that they're going to be a few minutes late because of ball games. And we have some people that are doing parent nights that are going to jump on a little bit later as well. All right, I'm going to end that poll. If I can get over there to that section. And it looks like, ta da, ta da, ta da, all of you are first time attendees. Mm -hmm. I think that's the first that I haven't had a returner. 
All right, so that means I need to make sure that you guys are comfortable using um, our platform tonight. So before we do that, I'm Teresa Thomason. I'm one of the instructional technology facilitators for the district. I am your host for PD and your PJs. And along with me tonight is Christy Turner and Katherine Leatherman. And I'm gonna let them unmute their mics and hopefully turn their videos on so you can see them. They're gonna be moderating the chat and I'm gonna be quiet and see if they wanna say hello to you guys. Hey everyone, I'm so glad you're here. Let us know if you need anything, I'm in the chat. Hey guys, looking forward to tonight. They will answer any questions that you have. Catherine works secondary, so if you're a secondary teacher, you can direct your questions to her if you don't want to do to everyone. And Christy is elementary, and you can direct your questions to her if you would prefer to stick with just elementary, or you can put it in there for both of them to see. I promise they will answer you. So let's talk about the platform since all of you are brand new to this. I hope you can see how easy it is. You're kind of looking at a screen. The reason that we recommend that you use two devices is so you can see me and see my screen. So you'll know what we're doing and then you can practice on another one. If you didn't have a second device, that's okay. Deep breath. You'll just have to toggle on your tabs back and forth. And I'll try to keep that in mind if you'll put in chat if you're having issues. So you see the uh, presentation in the middle of your screen. Across the bottom of your screen, you guys have a microphone that you will be unmuting later because I'm gonna ask you a question and I'm gonna ask you to respond. If you wanna turn your video camera on, you can do that by clicking on the video camera itself. And then of course the chat window is super important so you can put questions and, and um, maybe ideas in that chat window. And if you ever need to share your screen, I will give you permission and then you can share your screen because I have to do something in the back end to be able to let you do that. So feel free to mute and unmute as you need to or to turn your video on and off because honestly when I'm not seeing other people I just see a bunch of names over here I'm wondering if I'm talking to a computer. So just to let me know that there's really people out there please I want you in the chat right now to introduce yourself tell us your name and where you teach. Oh, and look at Laurie Melton's already jumping in there and doing that. Hi, I'm Star Edwards. I teach at Highland School of Technology. Hey, Star. We have a couple of other people in our chat. If you see some of your friends, you guys can say hello to them. You can drop down beside of the word everyone and it should have their name that you can send a message to. I see we've got a good mix of some secondary and elementary people here tonight. Looks like most all of us are teachers, so that's gonna be helpful. All right, guys, thank you for participating in the chat. So our purpose tonight is to explore Book Creator for Chrome. There is a Book Creator app for iPads. It's a paid app, so we're not gonna talk about the iPad app tonight. We're gonna to focus only on Chrome because yes, it is free. And I wanna show you how easy it is to use for all content areas and grade levels. And I will scaffold it as I go to make sure you guys are comfortable with what we're doing. So I'm gonna launch one more poll. I'm curious if any of you have ever used Book Creator before. And if you are a power user, oops, I've lost my mouse. There it is. If you're a power user, I'd like to know that too, so I can sort of adjust the presentation for tonight. So if you're new to Book Creator, not ever used it before, if you'll let me know if you used it a little bit or if you are a super user. One more second or so. Okay, I'm gonna end that poll. 90% of you 
are new to Book Creator. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I go through the presentation tonight. And again, I've lost my mouse. <laughs> All right, so I have an example of what a book creator can look like. A couple of years ago, we um, totally remodeled our kitchen and I documented that process in a book. And as I open my book, you'll notice that you can put images, you can have text, you can have drawings on it, um, you can have audio. That speaker is me talking about our older kitchen. You can put, um, speech bubbles, all kinds of things in there. And you even can put, get all the way over here, a video right within the book. So it's super, super um, multimedia, awesome tool that can be read on a Chromebook. You can play it right within Book Creator or you can download it and save it into Google Drive and use an app to, to read it. So what's the benefits of having Chrome? Well, it's an open-ended tool. We call it an evergreen tool. That means it can be used for any grade level and content. Students basically have a blank canvas to share their learning. And it's easy to use because basically you're just creating a book. And most students do that when they are doing analog. The cool thing about Book Creator is it provides a published link that can be viewed online by anybody. So it gives an authentic audience for your students that they can share their work outside of the classroom. As you saw in my example, it's not a static book. I love reading and I still read books that I can hold, but there is an advantage to being able to embed videos, maps, those kinds of things that will help engage your readers. And Book Creator lets you do that, and again, for free. It has tons of accessibility features, which is helpful for students that may have disabilities, but it also levels the playing fields for all students. So even our youngest learners can use the text to type um, function, and they don't have to be able to spell the words that they really want to have in their book as long as they can say it. You also have the ability to search for images right through Google and they are filtered images and they are images that are out there that are okay to use. They're called Creative Commons. So we don't have to worry about giving um, kudos or um, citing those resources. As a teacher, you will have a classroom library where you can monitor your students' work, give them feedback, keep their things organized even, and then you could even combine the books. So for example, if you have every student create just one page, once you have them all in your library and they're in there as soon as they start creating, you can push those uh, pages together and put them into one book. So keep in mind, anytime we go digital, that the content or the story is still the most important part. So use the same standards that you would use for students that are creating analog work and do the back work behind it, whether you're storyboarding or doing pre-writing things ahead of time. So there's tons of project ideas of things that your students could use with Book Creator. I've listed a few on this slide, but instead of just talking about them, I would like for you guys to experience it. So those of you that are in elementary, I want you to go to slide 22 and you'll see links to several elementary examples. Those of you that are secondary, if you'll go over to slide 23, you're going to see a couple of examples from secondary teachers. And if you want an idea of how you could use it just as a teacher, like a textbook, you could flip over to slide 24 and take a look. So I'm going to give you a second to do that. That's another interactive part of this training. And I'm going to be quiet while you guys are taking a look at those resources.
Okay, guys, just about 30 more seconds. All right, so obviously that wasn't enough time to look at all the links that I had there, but hopefully you looked at one that could get some ideas or some list of things that you could get some ideas. So let's share the knowledge as a group together. So I would love some volunteers if you would unmute your microphone and tell me an idea that you saw that you really liked or um, an idea that's popped into your mind because you've looked at something. I like the idea that they could um, do nonfiction books. Yes, thank you, Frankie. Well, as a kindergarten teacher, I think it would be a good idea to do like a page per student on some of their math skills. It's a great way to show it off for like parents. Yeah, good idea. Thank you. Hey guys, I've used Book Creator in the classroom before and done the book reviews like they had an example on the elementary site, but I've never used it as a teacher text. Kind of, I could use it like as a scavenger or something to plan like a task throughout the day or week. Yeah, good idea, Kim. Thank you. Anybody else? I was thinking in the third grade um, Lucy units, we have to research animals. Um, and I was thinking we could use that for researching animals in groups and everybody could share a page. Exactly. And then you could put the groups together. So it doesn't have to be a whole class book put together. You could put the group together. Great idea, Laurie. And again, guys, remember, you have the Google search capability, so you can pull in images really easily. I, I see the taking it back to my other teachers. So I see a lot of usage for like the science classes or I can make a book on the different types of cells and different types of diseases and things like that. And then the history teachers could use this a lot in the higher level now, higher level. High school level, I'm sorry. Exactly, Star, is what the beauty of it is. It can be used for all subject levels. Great ideas, guys. Anybody else? Yeah, I, um, I teach Spanish, and I think this would be absolutely critical for making picture vocabulary booklets. Um, I mean, they could literally do this with every single vocabulary lesson that they do. And it would be a, a, a better visual for them than just a list of words. Exactly. Yes. And there's research behind that to where you put all that together. It does help. Excellent idea. All right. Anyone else before we move on? I have one question. Um, do you know if you could import like um, equations and stuff like that? into this oh, star i don't know i don't normally do math equations so when we get in it in just a little while we'll take a look because i'm i don't want to answer that definitively because i don't know for sure okay thank you mm -hmm. all right so speaking of getting to it that's what we want to do next so i want to do um kind of a gradual release i want to model and help you guys do it. So I'll do it and then I want you guys to follow and then you'll be able to do it on your own. So one caveat before we get started, please pay close attention to what I'm getting ready to say because I'm gonna send you to the website and when you get there, you're gonna see an image on your screen that looks exactly like this. By default, 
it's on the student sign-in. Notice Google, woohoo! But your teachers, so you're gonna wanna click the teacher sign-in and still sign in with Google, okay? So you guys can click the link in the slide or go to app.bookcreator.com. And that link is being put in our chat. Christy, while you're putting that link in there, will you put the bit.ly address back in too? We've got some people that are needing the presentation. All right, so speaking of that, I'm going to come out of my presentation. So the bit.ly address has been put in chat and the website address has been put into the chat. So if you are a first time user, and a lot of you said you were, you will probably have to fill out some information about being a teacher. And the reason that, they, that you have to answer those questions about your grade level and all of that stuff, it helps Book Creator put together resources that is kind of designed for you. So unmute your mic if you're having problems or chat Catherine or Christy or the whole group. Let us know if you're having any problems getting into the site. By the way, I do have the handout linked, so don't worry about not having to know what you're doing because I'm going to show you and you're also going to have this presentation and you're going to have that handout. All right, about 30 more seconds to make sure everybody's got their account created before we do our hands on. I do want the largest portion of our time together tonight to be where you guys are playing with this and seeing all the possibilities. I think you're going to be amazed at what's available in this program, especially considering that it's free. All right, if anyone is not in, if you'll send a message or unmute your microphone really quickly. All right, since I'm hearing crickets, I'm going to assume since I can't walk around and see your screens that you guys have your accounts ready. So you will have, um, you should be on a page that looks something like this, except you won't have books like I do. You may have the tutorial book, but you won't have any of the others. This is one library. This is your teacher library, and later on I'll show you how to do your uh, class library. So you can build your teacher textbooks or whatever that you want to share out from here, and we're going to play in our teacher library. So since you guys don't have any books yet, we are going to create a brand new book all together. So you will notice that up in the top right hand corner, you have a, a golden button that says new book. If you guys will click that. And you'll notice that you have a few choices about your book shape. I usually use landscape so I can get as much um, page as I can get. But notice also that you can do graphic novels or comics. 
And you, this gives you a few extra um, choices when we're in our menu than we're gonna have with our plane. So just to show you the choices that you have, I'm gonna go ahead and choose Landscape Comic. You guys can pick whichever one you want to. So I'm not really gonna make a comic book, I just wanna have those choices to be able to show you. So once you choose your layout, and I have a real book when I do this, especially with elementary students, and tell them, you know, the first thing you see on a book is the cover. So the first thing you see on a digital book is the cover. So we need to build the cover. So let's talk about the buttons that you guys see over on the right-hand side of your screen. There's a plus, there's an italicized I, and there's a play button. If you will click the plus on the right-hand side of your screen, because I chose comics, I have three tabs under this plus of things that I can add. So under comics, I can add panels. I can have these speech bubbles, thought bubbles, fancy text or stickers. But I'm gonna to go to media right now and I'm gonna show you the choices that we have there. So you can import, you can use the camera on the Chromebook to take pictures, your drawing pen, your ability to add text, and your ability to record. So let's just start at the top under the media tab and click on import. Notice all my goodness of the things that you can import into this book. So Kim was talking about earlier doing like a textbook, you could bring in maps. So if you're doing a study of something, some country for social studies or history or whatever, you could bring in maps. Um, anything from your drive, anything you have on a computer. You can also embed things. So guys, you could go to a YouTube video and grab the embed code and bring it and put it in this book. So I'm gonna stick with images for tonight. We're gonna keep this simple. So I'm gonna think of a topic that I wanna write about. And since I am so ready for fall, I think I'm gonna do the season of fall. So I'm gonna put in my Google search, fall or autumn, and look at the picture choices that I have to be able to pull in for the front cover. So I would choose a picture, and the way that you do that is you just click the picture, it puts a blue box around it, and you click select. And the cover is now has an image on it. So you guys find a picture, and add it to your cover. If your picture comes in too large, when you click on it, you have your handles, so you can resize. You also have your rotator tool that you could rotate and have the um, pictures on diagonals or however you want to do that. And you also, if you move it around with your mouse, you'll see the guidelines to let you know exactly when it's in the center. I can't open the thing. All right, so all books have to have a title. So now we're going to go back and click on the plus under media and choose text. Now I'm going to pause and I want you guys to notice something, especially those that have students with disabilities or our young learners, our kindergarten and first grade teachers. If you'll notice, I could type, but there's also a microphone in the top right-hand corner of this text box. So the students could actually record and it will type whatever they say. But I'm just gonna type my title. Now, the only thing you can do with the text within this text box is to bold it 
italicize it, underline it, or link it. But don't despair, because I want to show you how to make it pretty and do all kinds of fonts. So go ahead and type your title, and when you're finished with your title, click Done. You can grab your title and put it wherever you want it to be on the book. So I'm going to center it. Now, guys, it's most important that you still have the blue handles around this text because now we are going to use the inspector tool to change the font color, the size, and all of that stuff. And the inspector tool is the italicized I button in the top right hand corner. So as long as I have my text selected, I'm gonna click on the I. Now you'll notice that I can do some pretty cool things with my text. I can center it within my text box. I can use the slider to make it larger or I can just click on the plus. I can change the font style. And once you select your font style, you just click the back arrow to get back to all of your other choices. I can change the color. So I think I want to do something more fallish. So I can apply that color. Click the back arrow to get back to all of your text. If you want to put a background color on it, you can. If you want to shadow it, you can. And if you want to layer it, especially you secondary folks, your students probably will get into the layering of all the things that they can do on a page. This is where that happens, where you're moving it backwards or forwards on the page. Now, while we're in the inspector tab, you'll notice that I also have another um, tab under the inspector button that says page. And your students will absolutely love the ability to put all of these different kinds of backgrounds on their paper. Because I chose comic, I have these um, really cute ones that look like these guys. It will show you the ones that I've used recently, but if I keep scrolling, you will see that there are certain categories. So if I just want paper types, lined paper, college ruled paper, graph paper, you also can put borders on your pages. So you can see where graphically your kids will have a lot of fun with this. Any questions so far? Are you guys good? All right, let's continue. Let's go ahead and go forward. I'm not gonna make you guys put the author's name on your book. Of course, I would make the students do that. To go to the next available page in your book, in the grayish blue area, you'll see a go forward arrow over on the right. If you'll click that go forward arrow, it brings you into the next, the actual opening of the book to the page two. So let's go back in, go back under media and go get another picture or take a picture of yourself and put on this page. Either one, you can go to import and search another image from Google, or you can use the camera and take a picture of yourself. I'm gonna use the camera because you guys can already see me anyway. When I click on camera, notice now I have two options. I can take a picture of myself or 
I can record myself. So here I could put a video recording in live. So Star mentioned earlier about how secondary science could use this. Even elementary science students could use this where you're doing a science journal. You could record the experiments that are going on in the classroom and have the actual video. So I'm gonna take a picture and then I'm gonna use that picture. And the picture loads on my page. Again, I can resize it, I can move it, I can put labels on it. I think I'm going to go under the eye and put some kind of background behind that picture. Make that a little bit more exciting. Again, the eye button is your inspector. Now, when you get your picture imported from Google or your picture taken with the camera added to your page, if you will go back to the plus button and click on media and choose the pen, this is pretty exciting. You'll notice that I have markers, I have crayons, I have paint brushes. And I also have auto draw. Now, I don't know about you guys, I'm not the greatest drawer, so I could use auto draw and it will try to figure out what I'm drawing and put it in, let me choose if that's what it really is and put it in there. So for example, if I try to draw, and again, guys, I don't draw well, you'll see as it's trying to figure out what in the world is this chick drawing, See if it figures it out. Yes, it did until I put, there it is. I'm trying to draw a bicycle. So now you'll see up at the top where it says, well, did you mean these things? Yes, I meant a bike. Look how much nicer that looks than my poor pitiful drawing. That was added this summer as a new feature. And you click done once you're finished with that. Go back into the drawing again. This time I want to use the paintbrush. You can change the thickness of your tools. And then you can paint. And you also have your color picker up at the top. I'm going to put some glitter. It has nothing to do with fall, but why not? And paint all over that side with glitter. Once you are finished with that, click done and it's going to add it to your page. So I'm going to give you a second to explore the um, drawing tool. Y'all are so quiet tonight. I hope you don't hear my dog barking in the background. All right, the last feature that I want to show you under the add button is the ability to do the audio recording. So you just click the audio recording and it goes into the record sound and you have the start recording up in the corner and it will count it down. I can't wait for fall. Please come soon. I'm tired of hot weather. And you can play it as a preview, which I'm not going to do. And then you can do use recording and it puts the speaker icon on your, on your page and you can move that speaker icon wherever you need it to go. So a great way to have actual voice Great way to check for fluency when they're doing their own reading from their writing.
And then, of course, you guys would click the, add, the go forward arrow to add another page. Okay, when I tried to do a add on the speaking thing or whatever, I got audio recording is not available on the ISO Chrome. Please use Safari or a different device. That's strange, Star, because I'm running Chrome. As you can see, I'm in Chrome browser. Um, well, I'm using my iPad. Would that be a problem? Mm, it shouldn't be, but it will probably on an iPad would work very better in Safari because that's the natural browser. Okay. But it should work for Chrome Chromebooks at school, right? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. I do this with okay. kids and it, it works beautifully. Okay. That's all that matters. Okay. Thanks. Sure. All right, so if you want to preview what your book looks like, you click on the play button up in the top right hand corner. And I'm going to go back to the cover. So you'll see kind of like my book that I showed you at the beginning how it would flip. And of course, I don't have but the one page completed so far. Now, while I'm in this section, another accessibility feature is the ability to have the book be read. So that's pretty cool too, especially if we go back to Kim's idea from earlier, if she creates a textbook of some sort for a topic that they're working on and you have students that have um, difficulty with the reading, it will read to them. Now, while we're in this part, guys, I want you to go ahead and click on the share button and, and publish this book. It's okay, nobody's gonna know it's even there. It's okay. Publish it online and grab the link because you're going to need that. So you're going to publish online, title the book, and you're going to click publish this book and copy the link because that is my proof that that's the DLC artifact that I'm going to need from you guys. All right, so once you've grabbed that, if you will click on edit to get back into the edit view and the edit button is on the left hand side. And then click my books because that's the only time we don't have time to do a whole book tonight. So that's all we're going to get done. So it comes back to your library shelf. So if you'll remember just a few minutes ago, I told you basically you can have two libraries for free inside of um, Book Creator. Hold on, I've got somebody asking a question. Yes, it's been ver verified, Star, that it does work in Safari on the iPad. All right, so from this page, you can, if you'll look underneath where you've got your book title, and I should have that title instead of my book. You'll see a stack of books. If you click on that, you'll have the option to import a book from somewhere, from another person's library. You can move it to a different library. You can copy the book, or this is where you can combine books. So when you create your student one, and you have books to combine, you click combine, and then it will pull in all of the books that are in the shelf, and you click the ones that you actually want to combine, and click next. I'm going to call this one, delete this one, because I don't want to keep these crazy things that don't relate to each other. So you would have to create your own new cover. So of course you get rid of this uh, book icon. So here's the All About Cats book that came in, and you can see I've been playing in that one. If I keep going, there's the example about um, poetry drawing observations and so forth. So that's how that works about combining pages. So how do you get it to where your kids can get to this? That's the magic question. So from your library, if you guys will go over to the left-hand side of your screen and click the pancakes, 
or the menu icon. Now I'm a Book Creator Ambassador, so I can create multiple libraries. You guys should just have the ability to create one more because it's free. So when you click create a new library, you name it. So like for my um, teacher class, I would name it my name. And then you decide what you want your students to be able to do. Of course, you want them to do image searches. You want them to edit their own books. You want them to see each other's book in your library. So I would leave all of those on by default. You have to decide whether you want your students to be able to publish their books online without having to go through you to do that. And if you want that to happen, you just toggle that back on. Um, I need some help on how to share the book again. Okay. I got it published and I got it in there, but I I'm, can't figure out where to share it. Okay, I haven't given you where to put it yet. And okay. but you're good. Your computer's just holding that link in its memory. So hang on, I'll show you in just a minute. Great question though. All right, so once you get your library created, and this is my demo library, you'll notice that you have an invite code and that's how you get kids to join the library. Now, guys, remember this is free. So you get you as a teacher in your teacher library, you get 40 books. So I could create, in theory, I could create 40 textbooks or I could create 40 stories that I wanna share with my students. Your student library also only gets 40 books. So high school people, I know that's not cool, but you can download the books out of your library into Google Drive, or your kids can put it into their Google Drive. And using um, the app Readium, they will be able to read it without it being in there. And then you can delete the book and start all over. But because you guys are attending tonight, um, as you know, North Carolina hasn't finalized our budget, and I don't wanna get into those political conversations about that, but we're waiting for our DLI money to drop. And once it does, I am going to do a will decide on everybody that signs up at the end of this tonight. And one lucky person that's attending tonight's session will get a paid version of Book Creator. And that will allow you to have multiple libraries and more than 40 books. Woohoo! Right? One other thing in your teacher dashboard, you can join other libraries. So if you wanna work with a teacher, another teacher, you can join their library. So you can see that Christy and I have been kind of playing around together and I have joined her class. So I can go into her class and I can create books and then she'll be able to um, combine those books or publish them or whatever. The last thing I want to show you in the teacher lot in the teacher dashboard is your resources tab. So when you signed up earlier tonight and you told them what grade you taught and all of that stuff, they piled resources together according to what you teach. So I think I selected everything when I was in here. They have given you um, resources by grade level, by subject, and thousands of ideas of ways to use it in your classroom. So all of that is under your teacher dashboard. So going back to my presentation, I've covered all of that stuff. Remember the handout link is on the slide and it walks you back through exactly of what to do. So if you wanna tell your friends, your coworkers about what they missed tonight, you can actually share this handout with them and they'll be able to create their Book Creator account and get started. And then there's also a link on how to create a book that tells you step-by-step step of how to use the inspector, how to do the reading and how to do the sharing of the books. So those step-by-step -step directions are there for you. Of course, your ITF is available to help you as well. 
Here's the Readium app that I mentioned earlier that you can download those books into Google Drive and then use this app to read them. Talked about the dashboard. All right, the last part of the resources that I have for you, Book Creator does webinars as well. Theirs are not interactive like this one is, so you'll have to pause it and then do something and look, then go back to listen. They have a great support group or support, uh, Oh yeah, support group, it's getting late. They have a great support department that will answer your questions pretty quickly. They have a very active Facebook group. Some of those examples that I showed you earlier or had you look at earlier came from that Facebook group. They have Twitter chats and again, those two handouts that I showed you are linked again under that resource page. So I want you guys to think about how you could implement this in your classroom. How would you introduce it to your students? Maybe with an All About Me book, or think about your upcoming studies or a unit that you're gonna do and how you could incorporate the multimedia capability of Book Creator with that. You could even create an exemplar project for something that you want your students to accomplish. 